how is it that the Idaho killer managed to miss two of the women in the house? Have you wondered about that? Because I have. I wondered, how is it that the person who committed the Idaho murders managed to kill two people on the third floor, two people on the second floor, and to miss the two women on the first floor? I wondered about that, and I think we now have some new answers to that question. First of all, one misconception that I had early on that many of us did was that the two women were actually on the basement floor. For some time now, though, there's been a rumor that one of the roommates had moved up to the second floor. There were originally six women living in the house, six bedrooms, one per bedroom. But one of the women left before the semester started, never actually lived in the home. And that particular woman's room, as I understood it, was on the second floor. So there was speculation that maybe one of the women with a basement apartment or room had moved up to the second floor. I think based on the information we have from the police in the statement released, I think that's the case. I'll show you a quick picture. Anne Han 73 posted this picture on Reddit. You can see she's marked out the three floors from a picture side view of the home. The first floor is the parking level and is actually underground on one side of the house, but above ground on the other. The second floor has sliding glass doors you can see in the picture that come out onto the ground. And then the third floor has sliding glass doors, but they go to a deck. It's not even on the ground. Now I've seen two different diagrams of the interior of the house. There aren't pictures that I've seen that are definitely verified, but these two diagrams have an important difference. And I think that makes it more likely that one is correct than the other. You can see in this particular drawing what's supposed to be the second floor of the home. The second floor has two bedrooms and one bedroom is in the upper corner of the diagram, another in the bottom right corner of the diagram. The upper left-hand corner, according to the Daily Mail, was the room where Zana Kernodal and her boyfriend Ethan Chapin were staying. The bottom one may have been where the roommate DM was, and I'm going to read you her statement to the police, or I should put it this way, the summary the police gave of DM's statement. DM was one of the roommates who was not killed and stated she opened her door for the third time after she heard the crime and saw a figure clad in black clothing and a mask that covered the person's mouth and nose walking towards her. DM described the figure as five foot 10 inches or taller, male, not very muscular, but athletically built with bushy eyebrows. The male walked past DM as she stood in a frozen shock phase. The male walked towards the back sliding glass door. DM locked herself in her room after seeing the male. DM did not state that she recognized the male. This leads investigators to believe that the murderer left the scene. That was important in establishing for the police when exactly the murder happened as closely as they could get. And it was also critically important because it was an actual identification of what the person looked like. Not an identification of the person, but of the general characteristics of the person in terms of height, the bushy eyebrows, and the athletic build. And that it was only one person and it was male. All of those things were, of course, relevant to the police. They also then said they found a shoe print just outside the door of DM's bedroom located on second floor. Thus, again, showing that DM had actually moved to the second floor. And they say this is consistent with DM's statement regarding the suspect's path of travel. But let's look specifically at what she tells us. She states that this person walked towards her and then states that he walked towards the back sliding glass door. She also states, apparently, that she was able to see the person face to face because she was able to see he had on a mask that covered his mouth and nose and he was walking towards her. So that tells us she was looking directly at him because he was walking toward her. That seems virtually impossible. How did he miss her? How did he not see her? And I've heard two different speculations. One is maybe he was exhausted having killed four people and just decided he had to cut his losses and leave. Another argument I've heard is that maybe he just couldn't see her because it was dark. That seems odd given that she could see him 
and could even describe that he had on a mask over his face. So that seems odd too. Now let's take a look at two different diagrams from the interior of the home. These are both diagrams by people who were making an effort to get as close as they could. There's a key difference. So this first diagram from the Daily Mail, I want you to notice something important about the bedroom on the bottom right where DM would have been. I want you to notice that the door goes straight out to the living room. It seems unlikely that the door would be there for a few reasons. First, the suspect would have had no real reason to come all the way over there if what he was going to do was walk through the foyer, through the kitchen, and out the sliding glass doors. It would seem odd that he would make a detour right over in front of the bedroom. Secondly, it seems like it would be more difficult for her to see him face to face. I saw a different diagram of the Idaho home. This one comes from HVW24 and it was posted on Reddit and he has a different look. You've still got the foyer, you've still got the kitchen and you've got the sliding glass doors. But in this case, the bedroom, which we now know is not vacant, but where DM was staying, had a door, not on the front, that's where a set of sofas was, but had a door to the side into the foyer. That would make even more sense, frankly, because you could have DM standing inside a room looking out the door, but she's in a darkened room, which makes it possible for her to see the suspect, but impossible for him to see her. It also means he could easily step right there beside the door on his way through into the kitchen and then out the glass doors. In other words, he may never have known she was in the house. Why? he didn't check that isn't really clear. So while we don't have any direct answers on why it is that the suspect did not harm DM, never even approached her, he may not have known she was there. She may have been hidden in a darkened room so that he never really realized she was there. Although it makes it absolutely no less terrifying for her, I am sure. Thanks for watching. I'm Harvard Lawyer Lee. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.